Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Seba, and today we're investigating the applications of various heteroscedasticity tests using eViews regression output. In previous tutorials, we have estimated this simple multiple linear regression that regresses daily returns of Tesla over five years onto daily returns of the S&P 500 index and the crude oil index. And we have uh, interpreted that Tesla returns are quite responsive to uh, US market index, not so responsive to oil. And in the previous tutorial, we have identified that the uh, absence of serial correlation assumption of the gauss marker theorem does hold, as none of the uh, autocorrelation tests or other procedures identified the presence of serial correlation. However, what about heteroscedasticity? Are the residuals of our model homoscedastic? Do they all have the same variance? Can we presume that? Well, for this, we'll have to apply a battery of heteroscedasticity tests that are readily available and quite easily to implement in eViews. For that, let's go view residual diagnostics heteroscedasticity tests. This allows us to select one of the few um, existing and uh, well-established heteroscedasticity tests or even design our own. So let's first start with the uh, one of the most common, uh, Bruce Peck and Godfrey uh, heteroscedasticity tests, which uses an auxiliary regression uh, that regresses the squared residual onto all um, available independent variables. So if we click OK, we'll see the auxiliary regression output. We have regressed the squared residual onto the constant and the two uh, independent variables. Basically, we test whether the variance of the error term depends on the value of our independent variables. And none of the two coefficients are statistically significant. As we can see, those p-values are quite large. And the overall explanatory power of the model using either f-tests or chi-squared tests uh, is insignificant. Those p-values do also exceed all reasonable confidence thresholds, which means that there is uh, no evidence to uh, presume heteroscedasticity as per the Bruce Peck and Godfrey test exists. The variance of the error term is not responsive to the values of independent variables. Well, if we were to save this particular test out, we could have frozen it, attempted to close it, and then named it as Bruce Peck and Godfrey. And that allows us to uh, refer to this test result at any other point in the future. Now, testing other heteroscedasticity uh, identification procedures, we can go to residual diagnostics again, go to heteroscedasticity tests, and then select the Harvey test, which is exactly the same logic. However, it uses the logarithm of squared residual to perform the auxiliary regression. For the Harvey test, the situation is very similar. The coefficients of Original independent variables are insignificant, and the tests for the significance of the overall model uh, are also quite high. The p-values are quite high, meaning that we fail to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity, so the null hypothesis of absence of heteroscedasticity, which is, so far, good news. We can also proceed to the Gleiser test, which is, uh, again, a specification that uses the absolute residual. Again, you've got the Bruce Peck and Godfrey with squared residual, Harvey test with log squared residual, and the Gleiser test with the absolute residual. We have got excellent implementations on uh, all of those tests in prior videos, so check those out if you want to know the fundamentals of those tests to a greater extent. However, their EVs implementation is strikingly similar. We can, again, interpret the p-values for our coefficients, and we can interpret the p-values for the uh, full model, which, again, are more interpretive in this case, and we can see that Again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis of no heteroscedasticity. Finally, the more challenging uh, heteroscedasticity test that uses uh, squared residual and the uh, independent variables as well as their cross products and squares uh, is the white test. Um, again, we can apply it and see whether the results are statistically significant. 
we see that we regress not only on S&P 500 and oil, but also on S&P 500 squared, oil squared, and the interaction between S&P 500 and oil. None of these coefficients are statistically significant, and the conventional F stat and the chi squared stat are also insignificant. However, uh, we have got uh, a significant result in terms of scaled explained squared sum using a chi squared a test with five degrees of freedom, as we've got five explanatory variables in the white test. So the results are mixed, but are still in favor of uh, homoskinasticity, as none of the individual predictors of squared residual are significant, and the two conventional explanatory power tests return very high p-values. Again, all of the tests so far uh, investigated one uh, version of heteroscedasticity, which is variance being uh, not equal judging by the values of some independent variables. But in time series, and we have got a time series on our hands here, we need to also test for autoregressive heteroscedasticity, meaning that variance today impacts variance tomorrow, not necessarily linked with any independent variables in particular, um, apart from time, that is. For that, we can use the ARSH test, which is also presented in the specification here, and we can select any number of lags we want. Again, here uh, we can select, for example, five lags that would correspond to a trading week. We can go further, we can go uh, smaller in terms of the number of lags. Most of the time, if there are ARSH effects, you can easily pick them up with one lag. So let's try one lag, then go for five lags and see what the difference is. So one lag, we can see that the uh, results overwhelmingly support the uh, presence of heteroscedasticity because the squared residual today does respond positively to the squared residual yesterday, so lagged squared residual. The auxiliary regression here is regressing squared residuals onto lagged squared residuals. The T stat is 4.85 and the p-value is overwhelmingly significant. And here we can also see the same result is present when we evaluate the significance of the model using either F test or chi squared test. If we go for a high number of lags, for example, we select an ARSH test with five lags, we'll see that the most of the dependence is actually associated with uh, lag order one, which is a very common stellarist fact in um, conditional heteroscedasticity where we have got um, just one uh, step ahead persistence uh, capturing most of the variability. We have got a significant effect for uh, a lag of three, but neither two, four, or five contribute anything particularly meaningful to the nature of um, variance persistence for our residuals. And still, our F-test and chi-squared test for the explanatory power of the auxiliary regression uh, strongly reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity in favor of heteroscedasticity. And finally, let's build a custom test. Custom test wizard allows us to first select uh, the independent variable. We can either go for squared residuals, as in Bruch, uh, Peck and Godfrey or White test. We can go for uh, log squared residual, as in Harvey test, or absolute residual, as in the uh, Gleiser test. So let's, uh, for example, select the Gleiser absolute residual. Then we can select whether we want the white specification with squares and cross products. So let's assume that we do, uh, and then we can select the uh, type of white test, whether we do want to include cross terms or not. Let's include the cross terms. Uh, let's include the specification of the Gleiser test, where we would have the original uh, independent variables there as well. Uh, then we might want to add any additional uh, regresses to the model, but let's uh, skip the step for now. And then we finally can integrate our custom test with ARSH terms. So let's include our ARSH specification and select, let's say, three lags, because we found that up to three lags is where some persistence is present. And finally, we can estimate our custom test and see that most of the persistence does come from our absolute uh, residual persistence. So we regress absolute residual in this specification as we selected the Gleiser test. Again, dependent variable is absolute residual. We've got three lagged absolute residuals and persistence is quite uh, prominent, 
All three terms are statistically significant, although the first and the third are the most statistically significant. And no um, white test terms, which are the uh, original independent variables, their squares and their interactions across products, are significant. Although the model overall is statistically significant and quite uh, decidedly so, with a p-value well below 1% in either of the specifications. And um, this is the heteroscedasticity tests tab. You might also want to have a look at the uh, coronalogram of squared residuals, which is the Lung box q test applied to squared residuals instead of uh, normal residuals. This uh, quite famously tests for heteroscedasticity instead of autocorrelation, which is what the original Lung box q is for. So let's have a look at Lung box q for squared residuals. Select, let's say, five lags. And for that, we'll be able to see overwhelmingly significant Lung box Q stats, which are again uh, test statistics that you then plug into a chi squared distribution. All p values are very low, which means that uh, autoregressive heteroscedasticity, uh, which are arch effects, quite typical for time series data, do exist. So, again, for heteroscedasticity tests, we identified that although there are little to no um, heteroscedasticity effects associated with the values of independent variables, that's what Harvey, Gleiser, and Brischbeck and Godfrey tests were designed to detect, there are time-dependent heteroscedasticity effects, most notably autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, that we detected using an ARSH model, as well as the Lung box q model for squared residuals. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to apply ARSH and GARSH models of various specifications in EVUs on the fly. So please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. I'm eager to see any first suggestions for videos you would like me to record in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.